when we were talking in the last hour that Nancy Pelosi has really put uh, Donald Trump in a box and a bit of a bind here in terms of uh, the State of the Union address. But there's other signs, too, that the Democrats um, are, you know, just the fact that they control the House is um, is is forcing the Republicans to sort of, uh, I guess, you know, uh, change their course to some degree. And, and, and I want to talk about the um, the the Russian sanctions uh, a little bit later. That took place in the Senate this week and it was pretty stunning. Uh, in, in many respects, but the um, I'm talking about Steve King, and it was a really interesting dynamic to see him uh, become all of a sudden persona non grata in the Republican Party. I don't know if there's some rule like the uh, 50th uh, time you uh, explicitly express white supremacy or overt racism. That's when they take uh, actions in the Republican Party. But, I mean, give me your take on what happened with Steve King, because uh, this is a guy who I think is going to have a tough time if he if he isn't forced to resign. He's going to have a tough time with reelection because he's just lost basically the big goodie bag for uh, the state of Iowa. Um, that is a, a seat on the uh, Agriculture Committee. Uh, but what's your take on how this went down? Well, uh, you know, I'm I'm uh, actually... <laughs> A little confused because I don't, you know, as you point out, Steve King has been saying this stuff for years. There is nothing new in what he said. He he gave an interview to the New York Times, and and it was it was a good piece. You know, it was one of those that's kind of homed in on his racism in a way that you don't normally see in the big mainstream media. I mean, that's maybe one of the shifts that sort of precipitated this is that media is at this point sort of you know trying to be a little bit more explicit in there in the way that they describe people like Steve King and that's a that's a helpful thing in terms of disseminating you know the the information about what he is nationally um, but you know I think that the biggest to me what this seems like is that that on some level I mean, first of all, of course, the Democrats now have the House, so there's a lot more, uh, you know, sort of tension there and reasons for Republicans to think maybe they should throw a few bones uh, that direction every once in a while just to kind of keep the peace uh, than they did before. But I really think it's something else. I think it's that there is an there is a growing acknowledgement that um, Trump's, uh, you know, Republican Party, uh, also known as the Republican Party, um, has a big, big problem with right. uh, with racism and it, they specifics especially have a big problem in the white house i mean that's pretty obvious they can't do that with him they're scared of him he's got this following and whatever so they're kind of throwing out steve king as the sacrificial you know the the, the human sacrifice to say look you know this is our our uh, our apology you know for being what we are and kind of trying to sort of cleanse themselves a little bit by sacrificing steve king and there's also another more cynical um, part of this, which is that they also need an excuse to be able to say, which they are doing, that Democrats are refusing to police their own for instance, right. Rashida Tlaib, who they are claiming is an anti-Semite. Of course, you know, she's a Palestinian-American, and so, you know, they've decided that her um, support for the Palestinian cause is anti-Semitism, which it isn't. But that's, you know, this is their way of sort of saying, look at us, we're just, we're so great. Right. We, you know, we're policing our own, and look at all these people, and they're going to point fingers at all the, the younger, more, uh, you know, I don't know, more lively kind of members of the House who are, you know, kind of challenging some of the sacred cows, um, and they're going to be doing that. So, I mean, that that's my take on it. I, you know, look, Steve King is a toxic person, and he has been for many years. In this environment, he's even more toxic than usual. Going to the, you know, giving an interview to the New York Times and saying, you don't understand why white supremacy has got such a bad name. I mean, maybe, even, you know, it just shows maybe there's even some little limit that the Republicans are, you know, are, are going to reach on some of this stuff. It was, it's, it's fascinating because um, uh, Tim Scott is what, who, is, the, is the guy who broke the dam here. Tim Scott, of course, is um, the, a senator from South Carolina, um, the other one, I guess, aside from uh, Lindsey Graham. And uh, he, is, um, he is 
African-American. He was initially appointed to that seat and then won re-election. And when Tim Scott came out, it really, it seemed to me to, to um, uh, raise the alarms because, you know. It made uh, them uncomfortable, for it sure. It made them super uncomfortable because Tim Scott is, you know, sort of one of their firewalls, right? Like, uh, well, we're mm-hmm. not racist. We have, uh, Tim Scott is a senator from South Carolina. <laughs> And I think some of our uh, best senators are black. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and indeed. And there's um, and there's some like, you know, there's some grumblings in South Carolina. It's interesting from South Carolinian um, conservatives. And it's unclear to me whether it I mean, ostensibly it's about some of his judicial uh, votes. Mm-hmm. But I wonder if it's not like, hey, wait a second. You're not supposed to be. This is right. not why we have you on the team. Uh, right. You know, you're freelancing a little bit too much. <clears throat> But I, you know, I wonder um, if if this is an indication that the Republicans are a little bit uh, nervous or if it was just a one off because I mean, I wonder if it was like they're they're reacting to externalities uh, as much as they're uh, reacting to uh, what Tim Scott did. And I don't know if there is a way for us to to get that sense, but there's definitely seems to be some measure of panic on the right uh, these days and i well, imagine I mean, look at look at the picture that 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 was you know widely disseminated at when, when the new house uh was sworn in it was all white i mean you know there's just nothing <laughs> it was all white guys i mean they they had they they have lost females i mean there are fewer women on the in the republican caucus than there used to be um you know at some point or another They've got to look at that and go, look, this, we can't, you know, we will not ever regain power if we do this. And, you know, if we continue it's not sustainable. that. It's not, it, it, it's just on, just by the numbers, it's just not sustainable. It's also, you know, it's fascinating too, and we can touch on this. Uh, Tucker Carlson uh, gave a uh, monologue, and, it, you know, and it's not, I don't want to get too uh, deep into this, but it was, um, and, and he was doing it, I think, um, in, um, in service of a more authoritarian, patriarchal society, I mean, that he was explicitly calling for. But his, it was a critique of, of market capitalism, uh, which was a fascinating thing to see from the premier leading talker on Fox News mm-hmm. uh, to have a full-throated um, a critique of market capitalism. There is definitely a sense that the right is nervous and they are on the defensive in in many respects. Now that I don't want to overstate this case, but uh, there there is a sense that rhetorically they are losing in in some serious ways, and they feel like they're being set up like bowling pins at a bowling alley. All right, we've got to take a quick break. When we come back, um, Heather, I will let you knock those pins down. I'm Sam Cedar. This is Ring of Fire Radio. <laughs> 